Hi friends! I hope everyone's doing dandy today because it's early in the morning and I'm really, really excited for today's video because we are knitting a checkered sweater vest. A checkered sweater vest. And I've been wanting to do this for a while and I've been practicing and getting like better at knitting because last time you guys saw me knit, it was my first time and since then, I gotta say I've um, I've improved a lot. I've made probably like five or six projects since then just because I knit 24 seven. And um, I wanna take it up a notch and I wanna try to make a checkered sweater vest today with these two colors here. We're gonna try to attempt this again for the third time and I feel like we're gonna be successful because I feel prepared. I did research, think I know how to do this. So we're gonna do it. For starting the sweater, we're gonna start off with the ribbing at the bottom and I'm gonna do it in this pretty pink color here and I'm going to cast on 40 stitches because I wanna do four checkers per row and then it'll be 10 stitches per checker wide. Even numbers. We wanna, you know, even. Who, what are you doing? He's good to go. Oh yeah, and I'm using 12 millimeter knitting needles for the ribbon, US 15. 40 stitches. Next, I'm just gonna do one by one ribbing. So, one knit stitch, pull it through, one purl stitch, pull it through. Hi guys, we're just gonna take a quick break from the video because today's video is sponsored by Pila. If you guys haven't heard of Pila, Pila is this amazing company here in Canada that creates these 100% compostable phone cases. It's pretty incredible that these cases right here can just be plopped into your compost with compost. Compost, when you're done with them, say you get a new phone, you upgrade, or say your phone breaks, you don't have to throw these into the garbage, you just put them in your compost, and no waste. Also, when you get your package from Pila, there actually is no plastic whatsoever in the packaging. It comes in a recycle parcel, and this. That's it, 100% recyclable. Right now on my phone, I have this little flower case, but I also have a few more cases, like my favorite booby one, flower power, and of course, our classic cow print case. You guys wanna hear some fun facts? When you purchase a Pila case, you're actually reducing the amount of carbon emissions by 30%. You're reducing water waste by 34%. And finally, you're reducing waste production by 80%. Yeah. So if you guys wanna get your own Pila case today, I do have a coupon for you guys so you guys can shop all of their amazing designs on their website. For the first 50 people, you guys will get 40% off your order, and then after that, you know, 51 on, we'll get 20%. All you have to do is use my coupon code, Jenna, at checkout, and you'll get 40% off your order. Order. Did I say that weird? Okay, let's get back to the knitting. Bam, bam, dork and chicken! I got the ribbing done. I ended up doing four rows, and I feel like it looks pretty good. That, you know, it's good enough for my sweater vest, so. Now we're gonna actually switch needles because these were only for the ribbing here and we're gonna go to these thick boys here and we're gonna go to 15 millimeters and we're also gonna start adding in our green color here. So for these checkers, you're gonna need two colors and I'm sorry I lined them up as balls. Like I, I didn't realize that until after the fact but you're gonna need two balls of each color, okay? We're just gonna start off with the pink and we're just gonna do a basic knit stitch for 10 stitches. Once you're finished the 10 stitches, you can go to the next color. So I'm adding in my green here. You just need to add it in like normal. We don't need to do anything yet. And then, you know, done 10 stitches, we're gonna add in pink. Then you do 10 stitches after that, then you add the pink and then we're done the row because that's 40 stitches total. Now, we're gonna flip it over to the back and you're gonna take those strands we added in and we're gonna tie them together like I'm, I'm doing on the screen here. This is so we don't have holes in our sweater. We need to attach it. We need them to be connected because we are 
adding different colors and they'd be holes that we didn't do this. Another thing, because we're working with four different balls, we have to make sure all our balls are organized because otherwise we're gonna get tangled and it's gonna be a mess. So organize your balls every single time you flip it around and you know, just do stuff. But on the next row and every other row, you know, coming up, we want to just like twist them like like I'm doing here, you know, swap places so they kind of wind around. This is so they will be connected and there won't be any holes in our sweater. Otherwise, we're just making four, you know, squares and they're not going to be attached together. So you want to wrap them around so they're nice and tight together. Is this making sense at all? But you just, I don't i don't know what I'm saying, but you can see what I'm doing, right? What I'm doing makes sense. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna stop talking. My plan for this is, I'm gonna try to keep it as neat as possible because working with this many strings, um, it's gonna get messy really, really easily. So every time I work with a color, I'm gonna place it down perfectly beside it and just keep it organized the whole time because if you don't it's yeah you might just ruin your yarn and get into like a big ball um my sister just texted me asking if i wanted to go to ikea i kind of need to go to ikea because my yarn bundle or stash is just getting really big and i need some baskets for it so brb I'm gonna go to Ikea and get some baskets for my yarn. I think my husband will love that. I'm back. Good news, I did get my basket and put it in the corner over there. Bad news, kind of bad news is I got something else. I got a Christmas tree right here. Well, that's it for my haul, so I'm gonna continue on this knitting journey and finish this sweater. Probably not today, maybe tomorrow. That'd be good if I could do the front today and then the back tomorrow, like that would be solid. And then tomorrow, cause tomorrow is gonna be Friday. And then Friday night, I can wear it and watch a movie because I just wanna be cozy when I watch a movie. All I really want in life is just to be nice and warm while watching a movie on the couch. I don't know if it's just my dog or if it's everyone's dog, but every single time I try to do something, just try to knit, just try to crochet, try to do something for myself, try to edit a video, he has to be on me. He has to be on my leg, he has to be on my lap, he has to be touching me. He has to be, you know, pushing up against me. He has to be pushing me off the bed in the middle of the night. He has to be pawing me with his paws. He's just gotta be touching me. I think I think we're good. I think we're good. This is how it looks. And I think that's how many rows I'm gonna do for like the squares. They look they look like squares, right? Yeah, I think we're good. So I'm gonna change over. So now I'm gonna do green on top of the pink here. Pink, green, you know, opposite for the checkers. So to do that, I need to cut all of these strings. Yeah, I gotta cut all these. When we're changing colors again, it's not hard. We did this at the beginning. I showed you guys. We're just repeating the same step we did after the ribbon. Same thing. We just got to do this every, you know, 10 rows. We have to change the colors because that's how you're going to make the checkers. But I don't think I need to explain anything here. No, no, I don't think I do. So let's just listen to some music right now. Okay, music time is over. So now that I've made two rows, I'm just like loving it and wanting maybe it to be a sweater instead of a sweater vest, just because maybe I'd wear it more that's a sweater. Just, just it's so soft and cozy already. I just want it to be like on my arms too. So I really want to make it a sweater, but I can't get any more of this yarn or at least I can't get any more of this pink because they were one-offs and I bought both of them. So we might have to do green arms or we'll, we'll, that'll be a future Jenna problem. How about we just do that? Let's just make the vest and then future Jenna, you can figure it out what the sleeves are gonna be like or yeah, all that stuff. Okay, good plan. Is this too short? Yeah, it actually might be too short this length. Yeah, cause my belly button's like, here, so. 
Let's do a couple more rows, a couple more rows of this, and then we'll start the neckline. I think I wanted a little bit longer. I'm back and I finished, not, no, not finished, but I finished a few more rows. I finished off those squares and I think I'm gonna start doing the shoulders, kind of like shaping the neck here because I like this length. Like I feel like this is a comfier length. So I'm gonna, yeah, just start the shoulders now, which I'll show you how to do. Dang it! Do you guys see what I just did? Look at that! How did that happen? So I drew this picture. I know it's it's the best thing you've probably ever seen. You don't have to tell me how talented I am or if you want, you can tell me in the comments. That's okay too. But here I'm gonna show you some diagrams on how to shape your sweater. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna cast off the middle four, no sorry, eight stitches. After casting off, you can just continue and finish the rest of the row and then your sweater should something look something like this. Great. So now we're just gonna work on one side of the sweater over here. So you're done that row, do one more row on the back. We're gonna do, you know, some pearl stitching and then we'll flip it over to the front where we're doing the knit and you're gonna cast off those first two stitches beside, you know, the stitches in the middle that we already casted off. Okay. Next, now we're going to finish the row again and then the next row we are just going to cast off and finish that shoulder. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Then finally, you're doing the exact same thing on the other shoulder. Same steps, just mirrored. Do we get it? I am just like so happy with this first part. Like I put it up and I'm like, okay, this is the perfect length. It is just so soft and it's just, it's just beautiful. Look at this. This sweater just makes me so happy. So I think I'm leaning towards making it a sweater now just because I just feel like going all out with it. So I'm gonna do some research for what type of yarn I can get for the sleeves. And I'm also gonna do some drawing because I'm thinking it's gonna have to be different checkers or a different solid color. It's just gonna have to be a little bit different just because I can't get this exact color, but there is a similar pink to this, so we'll see. But you know, some research, some brainstorming tonight, and then tomorrow, Hi friends. Hi friends. Okay, so today, woke up, got my period. I know it sucks. I also knit. I knit this morning and this is what I knit this morning. I got the, the ribbing here and I started off the base of the front of the sweater and <laughs> Last night, I was trying to figure out which colors I should do for the sleeves. And I was like, do I want to do checkers and just do a little bit different of a pink in there? Or do I want to do completely different colors? And couldn't figure it out. Don't know what I'm going to do. So I feel like I just need to knit more of the sweater, best portion of the sweater, and then, you know, figure it out later future generous problem. But I'm just gonna knit right now because I have to pick up my husband from the airport in two, no, I have to leave in two hours. So I'm gonna try my best to like ultra focus here and try to knit for two hours straight and let's see how much I can get done. I only got distracted a few times and I think I did pretty good progress. I think, I think that's pretty good for two hours. Like I got like half the best part, body part of it. But yeah, I think that was pretty good accomplishment in two hours I focused. Okay friends, I made my decision because when I went to the yarn store, they only had well, they had a whole bunch of colors, but this was the only option. I had to get green because the pink there, it was just like way too pink pink and not like the blush pink I want. Like I compared it because I brought my sweater and it was just like, it wasn't working for me. So I'm gonna do the sleeves in green and I'm gonna see how much left 
of the pink I have here and maybe we can do the cuffs in pink or maybe we can do like a stripe or maybe a little bit of checkers. I don't really know. So I'm gonna finish up the front of the sweater first and then I'll sketch up some options with my, my leftover yarn. That plant right here is so sad. It has like two, three leaves because they all other, they died. Back to the knitting content. This is how much I have of the front of the sweater now. And I think I'm at the point where I want to start curving the neck here just because I feel like, you know, I want to be fancy and add a little bit of a call, not collar, but like almost like a little bit of a turtleneck or just like, you know, the little, yeah, I think you know what I mean. I wanna add something just at the, the neck here. So I think I'm gonna start curving it because I want it a little bit lower in the front because otherwise it's gonna be like choking you. So I'm gonna show you. So I'm not gonna bore you guys because I just explained this for the back and pretty much I did the exact same thing for the front except I made it a little bit deeper the, you know, where the collar, is it a collar or I still don't know. The ribbing on the neck. I made it a little bit deeper because that's just how sweaters are constructed. Shirts, they're just deeper in the front because you have neck that goes down more in the front. Okay, so I ended up just adding an extra rose in between of my decrease slash not decrease, my casting off. So I added a few more rows like this so it was a little bit deeper. Good. This is what it looks like the front without the ribbing because obviously we're gonna do ribbing which I figured out it's called ribbing the neckline here so we're gonna do that but I want to do that last because this is all I have for pink left and I really wanted to do all the ribbing in pink I kind of just made up my mind right now that I wanted to do everything in pink so I'm gonna do the sleeves first try to get both cuffs done in pink and then hopefully, which I'm not really banking on, that I'll have enough for the neck. If not, that can be green and just all the bottom ones can be pink. I think that'll be fine. Also, on a non nitty note, my period has been pretty light. Jackpot! Bonus! <sighs> okay, friends. Few updates already. One, I put my Christmas tree up this morning. It's not looking too hot yet, but it's, you know, I just got it up because I wanted to see what the tree looked like, even though it's October 30th, and technically it's not Halloween before I put it, it well, it's not Halloween yet, so. It's, it's a little early, but just let me live my life. If I wanna put my Christmas tree up in October, I'm gonna put my Christmas tree up in October. If I wanna take it down in April, I'm gonna take it down in April. Number two, I got a sleeve done last night, which I'm very impressed that I was able to like whip this out so quickly. It only took me a few hours, I think, and one is done. And I even learned how to increase stitches last night. Like I was productive, like, and it looks amazing. I only had to redo the whole thing once. So I'm pretty impressed. I'm like, actually really really impressed because last time I did a sleeve it was just like a rectangle and this time it's like a triangle which is like what you want your sleeves to look like. To make this sleeve I started off with ribbing here and then when I started the green I started by adding a few extra stitches in there. I think I added like four more and then every six rows I added two more stitches until I got all the way up here. Ta da and then I think I had like 20 stitches. I don't know, this is why I'm not very good at teaching. The pieces done. And I have pink left over. I actually have a decent amount of pink, so I'm pretty sure I can do the collar 
in pink or at least a little baby collar so I have to sew the front you know those base pieces together the front and back just at the shoulders here and then I'll be able to do the collar and I've never done a collar before this is something new but I mentally feel prepared that I can tackle this and do it you know maybe just above average something like that for putting the two shoulders together I'm just doing an invisible stitch um, where you just put it through the V's on each side and just go back and forth back and forth like that so now that I have it, you know, sewn together the shoulders here, I'm going to attempt to pick up stitches and make a pretty, what is this called? A neck? I don't, I don't know. We're going to make a pretty neck. I'm just going to call it that. Bam, 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 turkey chicken. We got our, our loops here at the neck. So I'm gonna start the ribbing. So I'm gonna do like a one by one ribbing, the same I, I did for all ribbing, where it's just like knit, purl, knit, purl. And yeah, just do that all the way around. And I'll probably do like five, four rows, something like that. Again, just whatever I'm feeling, whatever's floating my boat at the time. Does anybody else have like a fear of like cutting nice yarn and like cutting nice fabric? I just, I just can't cut it until I know it's absolutely perfect. And even when it's perfect, I still have a hard time cutting it because there's so many times where I make something and then I take it apart and then you know you have like a lot of like little pieces of yarn instead of like one big piece, so. So first I just close the collar there. I'm just gonna call it a collar. And then I started to work on the sleeves. So for the sleeves, all you have to do is attach it to the side first. So you want it wide open like I have it there. And then, you know, once we have both the sleeves on there, then we can actually close it up, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So I have both arms attached now, but they're not closed. They're kind of just like flaps because the last step is once you put the arms on, you, you close it from here to here, like one full motion, follow my nose. Like that. You can either do it from the bottom or you can do it from the sleeve. It really doesn't matter. Just whatever floats your boats, you can, boats, I meant to say whatever floats your boat. Maybe you have more than one boat, who knows, but you can do whatever you want. And then after that, I spent like five hours trying to tuck in all the, you know, the hang, dangling, oh gosh. The dangling strings. Ah, oh, I'm just warning you, it, it takes a while. Hi friends, we have made it to the day of the reveal of my sweater because it's, it's finally done. And here it is. Here's my sweater, which I am so excited for this sweater. One, because it's obviously really cute and looks cute. But two, which is the most important part, is that it's not itchy. I am not wearing any shirt, well, I'm wearing a bra, but no shirt, no long sleeve, no nothing underneath, just a sweater, and I feel great. I feel warm. I feel amazing, and I have sensitive skin, so that tells you something. I'm very excited because now I have a really warm sweater for winter now to wear and love and wear and look cute. I hope you guys like the sweater. I think it turned out really well, and I did it in like three three days. Something, three, four days, something like that. But here's a 360 look. It's so cute. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed making this sweater with me. I'll have all the links down below for like supplies that I use. And also, I did some research, not before I made the sweater, obviously after, that you can actually get free patterns of a sweater that's similar to this. Like the style sweater, not the checkers, but that's, that's easy to add in. 
I'm going to include those links to some free patterns if you guys want to make a sweater and that will help you because I don't even know if this was a tutorial. It was just me making it. So if you want to make one, it's in the description. Isn't my hair really cute today? I did it all by myself. But that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of me making the sweater. If you guys do attempt to make your own sweater, be sure to tag me on Instagram, at Phipps, because I love seeing what you guys make. That's it. Round of applause. Okay, I'm going to go now. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.